Are you ready? Okay. My name is Ilcia. I've been diving for about 18 years now. Uh, I'll have to check the math on that later. Uh, I originally started in Hawaii, and that's where I learned a lot about dive community, which has really motivated me here in Washington as I've seen the community grow. Uh, I primarily, not primarily, I've just been spearfishing. Um, for those 18 years, that's what I've been spearfishing. It's not how long I've been snorkeling or anything. That's when I finally got a job and get my own equipment because my parents wouldn't buy it for me. And I've been uh, eating fish ever since. So the reason why we wanted to put these videos out, uh, throughout the years of spearfishing, it started off, uh, my, my exposure to a uh, sense of community and learning from other divers came from the Hawaii Skin Diver magazines. And then from there, I was exposed to the Hawaii Skin Diver forums, which no longer exist. But through that, divers in Hawaii would share their stories, whether it be a great day out on the water catching, what they caught, um, information about certain species, tips and advice, a lot, a lot of trade of, and communication. But at the same time, anytime you would have a near miss or a blackout event or something that could have cost someone's life or did cost someone's life, it was also shared in hopes of a lesson from that event helping to save other people. Uh, in Hawaii, we lose divers every year, multiple divers every year. And the, ease, the barrier of entry in Hawaii is a lot lower. You don't need the wetsuit. Uh, the water is warm enough year round, essentially. And it's accessible to everyone of all ages. So we, we get people of all experience levels pass away. And that was something that was a bit heartbreaking to see because you see literally kids go out and then couldn't help but think if they had the information, maybe it could be prevented or the safety or the training. And then you move forward to the modern day and you know we, we still have these events happening. And I wanna say they're, they're relatively shared, relatively open about it, but you know these things are shared as they happen. And as the community is growing here in Washington, my hope is you know, we can share the things that have happened in the past now before the next event happens. You know, the dive season starts maybe around April. Everyone's fully in the water by June, July, summertime. And as more people get in the water, likelihood we'll have an event by then. But maybe if we could share events a little earlier, just kind of jog the safety reflex of everyone. Could do some good. So yeah, this is not meant to, none of the takeaways here are for, are for you to take and say, hey, this is how I can dive deeper, longer, shoot more fish or anything. It, it's about staying safe. Uh, it's, it's about making it home to your family, uh, especially nowadays as we've gotten older and we see a lot of the other people who have left the community because safety issues, it's, it's, it's a high risk activity. Uh, that's, that's what we're hoping to share is the, the tidbits and takeaways. Specifically, you know, a lot of us have had training for what to do in a blackout or a specific event. But then when it happens, it's, it can be different. Uh, I still remember my first blackout event, which I'll share later, but uh, definitely learned some lessons on it that whereas if it ever happened again, I know what I would do different next time. And that's, that's what we're hoping to share is takeaways. Uh, so one of like the early, earliest memories I have from spearfishing that has stuck with me this far, as far as the safety aspect. We were diving one of our favorite spots and our dive times, I, sorry, let me step back. Uh, at this point in time, I had the job, so I had the wetsuit and all the great gear, but for my younger cousin, he didn't have a job. And I did get him, you know, some hand down fins and hand down spear guns, so, but we were, our dive, we were dive partners. And we, we definitely weren't one up, one down. This was the early days where I was like, hey man, if you're swimming above me when I'm on the bottom, you're scaring the fish away. We need to go separate ways. So I want to say it was maybe, I mean, it's typically four hour dive. So we're probably like the three, three and a half hour point. And we've always been really good about at least like keeping an eye out for like, hey, he's over there. Last time I saw him, like spotting him again before I continue diving. And I couldn't spot him. <laughs> and I kept looking around. I was like, okay, maybe when I pop up in the next one, maybe he's down right now. You know, we'll be there one night when I get back up. Went down, came up, just couldn't find him, couldn't find him. So 
swam over to a shallow reef because there's a drop off there. Stood up on the reef and I'm looking around. I can't see him. And I'm looking back on shore as he's, he's like 15, 14 or 16 at the time. So his dad is on shore. He, he doesn't always come out, but his dad happened to be on shore at the time. And shore was sufficiently far away enough where I couldn't see if he was on shore or not. And I, saw, I could see that there were people there, but I couldn't necessarily see my cousin. And man, I, I swam a lot that day. Uh, just back and forth along the, the ledge that we usually dive. Never saw him on surface and it got to the point where, like, am I looking for my cousin on the bottom of the ocean? And I know my uncle's on shore, so I'm like, I'm not going back without him, man. Uh, 45 minutes after that, I finally went in. And sure enough, he's sitting there with my uncle. And my uncle tells him, see, I told you, you need to let him know you're coming in. He's, he's out there looking for you. But I mean, that was just, it was overall terrifying to think. Like, my, my little cousin is like my brother to me. So, yeah, just to think that I was looking for him on the bottom of the ocean. Still sticks with me. All right, next one. Cool. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Dude, I'm still yeah, yeah. But now, like, um, like I don't know if you see when we dive now. Um, uh, now it's just every time before I go down, I'm I'm checking all of us. Even like as we dive in partners now. Uh, as you and I, it was Wendy and Kim at a point in time, like I obviously we're next to each other, we're accounted for, but I still look over at the other party. Um, and I've, I've just been a lot more vigilant since then, keep an eye on. And it's, it's, it's helped in an efficiency aspect for spearfishing as well. Uh, it was like the time Wendy shot a fish and I could tell by her body language on surface that she was, she was potentially fighting a fish. So I swam over to see if she needed assistance. But yeah, I think it's, it's that one having happened so early on, it really drove me to always have an eye on my dive partners uh, to the point where yeah, if I can't see them, we're going to stop and we're going to find them. Um, and then it's always really important now, especially if, if anybody's tired, cold or anything, you need to go in completely fine, but you need to check in with someone like that. That message has to be passed along. Like when we dive in LA for lobster, we do that now. Uh, yeah, just clear lines of communication because thankfully everyone was fine, but that was a shitty feeling. Like, do you have a personal checklist uh, when you're trying to be aware in the situation when you're out on a dive with your buddies? Um, kind of, sort of. It was almost like a like pre-dive checklist. So we, we always determine dive partners ahead of time. And then if we're going to have multiple groups of dive partners, I want each group to have a float, ideally. Uh, daytime, there's no excuse not to have it. It's, it's so much easier to spot a float and a flag at times. And then we have systems where... If one group uh, person wants to go in, the other person is going to join. It's going to become a three-man group, which is absolutely efficient for spearfishing. Like, there's don't ever shy away from that. That you will cover so much ground is super efficient. Um, so yeah, definitely do three divers. Don't be shy away from that. But communication, uh, game plan, exit plans, um, knowing tides and exit points is always a good one. We've actually we definitely had uh, situations where we're testing out new areas. And the current was so fast that we actually had to throw the anchor down because we were, we're going to miss our landing by miles. Um, and when we threw anchors down, we had one 50-foot length of rope going from the anchor to the first kayak. And then we had 100 feet from kayak to kayak and 100 feet from kayak to float. And you'd crawl your way up the line because you weren't swimming it. And you'd dive down at the anchor. And by the time you hit surface, just cruising around, you were at the float at the end, 250 feet away. Um, but we, we had a game plan. We knew that the tide was going to change over uh, at a certain time. So we knew hey, we had to kill 45 minutes. And then we, we timed the tide to get in and stayed on the correct island. Yeah. What about the three-person spearfishing setup do you like about it? Why is this so efficient? I got I to draw this, I think, because I don't explain things well. I, the drawing is really simple. It to the right. To the right. Yeah. Got uh, one, two, and three. And I don't know why, but I want a circle. So diver one is going to go down. Diver two is safeting diver one. And diver three is breathing up. Diver one returns to surface. Diver two is there. Counts to 30 seconds. Okay. Watches them and everything. 
Diver 3 can go down immediately. After the 30 seconds pass, Diver 1 switches over to safety, he's watching Diver 3, Diver 2 is breathing up. So it's just, there's no downtime whatsoever. You can always have a diver on bottom. Which, if you're drifting, like you're not passing up any grounds. Um, typically we did this when we started diving deeper and loved it.